Hey everyone, welcome to Homes for Beginners, where I show you how to do repairs around the house yourself. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to repair any light damage and paint a fiberglass hood for a lawn tractor. This is more on the budget-friendly side. If done correctly, you can achieve excellent results. This can be used on other forms of fiberglass panels such as boats, snowmobiles, other recreational equipment, etc. First was fitting the hood. This is a John Deere STX46, which comes factory with a plastic hood that are known to break. A new replacement hood is close to the value of what the tractor is worth, so instead I have a 170 hood, which came with the tractor that I'll be fitting. Remove the old decals. This can be done with the heat gun if you're having problems. However, I found picking at the corner, then pulling it back, they came off fairly clean. Any leftover adhesive can be cleaned up, and I'll show you that in a moment. I've already set up the hinge system, which you'll see further on in the video. The hood does get pushed back so it sits around the steering column. Then using a square, I marked out the cut lines. I did this for both sides. The bottom edges and angles are trimmed up to allow the engine to have air flow and reduce the chance of the hood rubbing on the body. Using an angle grinder with a cutting disc, next is cutting any portions I marked out. Make sure you are wearing a mask and safety glasses. This will leave a clean cut. Fiberglass is fairly easy to cut with a grinder. If you do have any access material that needs to be removed, it can be touched up with an angle grinder and flap disc, power sander, or even by a hand file. Remove any leftover residue from the decal using a wax and grease remover. The rest of the hood can also be washed to remove any contaminants if you wish. Now is blocking the hood with 320 grit sandpaper. When sanding fiberglass, I would highly recommend wearing gloves and a respirator. I have a flexible rubber backing pad on the back side of the sandpaper to keep a smooth sanding surface so I don't create any deformities. Work in multiple directions, perpendicular to each other, to ensure the surface is evenly sanded. Careful around any body lines or edges, this can be done by hand after. The hood is only a small surface, so there's no need for any power tools or air tools. Use compressed air to remove any sanding material from the surface. As you can see, we do have a couple damaged spots. Just light surface damage, but it will be visible in the paint if not repaired. Use 220 grip by hand to remove any loose material out of these areas. Then clean the area using a wax and grease remover. A wax and grease remover is used to remove any contaminants which may cause adhesion issues for the filler. There was light surface damage on other parts of the hood, so these two were also touched up using 220 grit sandpaper. These light surface imperfections can include anything from chipping, peeling paint, scratches, or scrapes. There's no need to cover the rest of the hood with 220 grit sanding marks as it's a good base. Using a coarse grit paper would require sanding with a finer grit after and if not done correctly can be visible in the final paint finish. Clean the area with a wax and grease remover where the filler will be applied. I'll be using a two-part spot or also known as a glazing filler. This is used for light coats and can have the edges nicely feathered in. A two-part product is a much better quality where it's easier to work with and doesn't experience shrinkage like a single-part product. Always refer to the product's application guide for mixing ratios for the filler and hardener. Push the air out of the hardener tube, reinstall the cap, and knead the hardener. Hardener usually separates after sitting, so this will help mix it up before use. I dispensed my required amount of product onto a piece of cardboard with wax paper. Don't use this cardboard or any other surface which may absorb anything as it can soak up the resins from the filler. Then apply the hardener. Using a plastic applicator, drag the filler across the surface to mix. Do not stir the filler as this can create air bubbles. It'll be ready to apply once the filler is a consistent color with no streaking. Make sure you do this quickly as the filler can set up before it's applied to the panel. Apply the filler using a plastic applicator. This type of filler can only be applied in light coats. It's only intended for light, superficial surface damage. It's not intended for any structural repairs. If you don't get all the areas on the first time around, don't worry, more filler can be applied after. For any tight or small areas, instead of a plastic applicator, a razor knife can also be used. Let the filler dry. It usually takes about 30 minutes, but this can vary depending on how much hardener was applied and temperature. The type of filler I'm using is easy to sand, so any excessive material can be removed quickly and the edges can be feathered and smooth. 
To sand the filler, with this being a thin coat, I am using 320 grit sandpaper with a rubber backer to keep the surface free of any waves. Work in multiple directions if needed. The base below the green was showing in some spots, which isn't an issue. Primer will be applied before paint. Clean the hood with a wax and grease remover, both on the inside and outside. Any cut edges were also sanded using 320 grit sandpaper too. Here's a close up before the primer is applied. Primer is available in a variety of colors. A primer color can affect the final paint color too, so be mindful of that. This is a high belt primer which is great for filling in any sanding marks or light imperfections which I may have missed. Start with lighter coats, then a medium coat after this without causing any runs. All spots with filler have primer applied, otherwise you'll be left with outlining or ghosting in the final paint finish. The cut edges also have primer applied too. The cardboard does help with controlling some overspray. The whole hood will be sanded before paint anyway. Typically you'll need to wait 10 minutes in between coats, however this can vary based on the thickness of primer and temperature outside. I left the hood for the next day until sanding. Using 400 grit sandpaper, again with a backing pad, the whole hood is sanded, removing any overspray and orange peel left behind from the primer. Work in multiple directions, ensuring the whole hood is sanded and you have an even surface. While I'm finishing up the hood for paint, I watered the grass, where I'll be painting to keep any dust down so there's minimal risk of any debris being blown into the wet paint. Clean off any sanding debris with a clean cloth, then finish wiping down the surface with a lint-free cloth and isopropanol alcohol. Both the inside and the outside of the hood were cleaned. This is a milder form of cleaner than compared to the wax and grease remover, so it won't attack the primer which may potentially cause issues for the paint. Allow the cleaner to evaporate for about 10 minutes. First is painting the inside. The part which you'll want to have the nicest finish will be left for the last. Mix the paint accordingly. There is a variety of paints available on the market. For this I picked up the cheapest John Deere paint I could find. This is a single stage paint, so no clear coat is required. A two stage paint can also be used, which is a base and clear coat, and you can even have custom colors mixed up based on your project. Again, the cardboard is used to catch any overspray. The first coat is light. Try to get the hard to reach areas first and direct the spray in such a way where you're pushing away the overspray on the newly applied paint. This will help minimize any overspray and orange peel. Wait about 10 minutes in between coats. This can vary depending on the thickness of paint and temperature. Always ensure the can is mixed. Three coats were applied on the inside. First was the light coat, then was two medium coats. More coats may be needed depending on the quality of coverage and color. If you're noticing any outlining in the base, more coats are needed then. I let the hood dry for about 30 minutes, then flipped it over. I have a stand which only allows contact on the center of the hood where no paint is applied. The hood is cleaned again on the outside with isopropanol alcohol, just to be safe. Mix the can accordingly again, use the same process, apply the paint on the hard to reach areas first, then finish up on the larger exposed areas pushing away your overspray from a newly painted surface. Again the first coat will be a light application. The cardboard is used to control the overspray too. For this hood, I only required two cans of paint. Again wait 10 minutes between coats, three coats were done here as well. Just like I mentioned a moment ago, the first coat is a light coat, then two additional medium to fully wet coats, allowing the paint to flow while avoiding any runs. When done, I place the hood inside the shed to avoid any moisture exposure which may occur overnight. Moisture exposure on fresh paint can cause the paint to become hazy and unfortunately this can only be repaired by repainting. Dry times do vary, I left it for 48 hours before installing it back onto the tractor. I also painted the grill and gave the rest of the body a quick polish. Once done here you can see the final finish. Decals can be installed if you wish, however I would let the paint cure for at least a couple weeks before that's done. Both on the inside of the hood and through the grill you can see the hinge setup, which is completely different than what was used from factory. I used spring loaded stainless steel hinges which I purchased from online and mounted them to a steel plate. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a like and drop a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more home DIY videos. Thank you for watching.